the Dibbles. J Dog back to answer more goddamn fucking questions. And he's behind like a mofo. Just got back home from fucking goddamn Phoenix, Arizona. Back to the shitty ass fucking land. Cold as fuck out here. So definitely goddamn behind. I only got to shoot one video while I was out there. Didn't have time to do more. So questions are goddamn piling up. Uh, but so I don't think I have any goddamn paid questions. So those have been, those have been uh, slow down. So keep those coming in, goddamn it. Um, but why I got back waiting for me in goddamn line. So in case you fucking want them, I got the from compliments a Layla lover. And then actually, who was it? Give him a goddamn shout out. This was the homeboy that made made the stickers. I think it was him because he was asking about it. I just emailed him back. Is the guy that made them? He sent it to Chase initially. That Chase sent to me, but he's emailed me now back. Uh, Edward Fulmer. Shout out to you, bra bra. He's the one that made the meme, and then. Uh, Fucking um, Leo Lover made the goddamn stickers, and I just got them in. They may have came in a couple days ago, but I'll like I said, I'll have time for a few days. And that is, so if you want them free in goddamn orders, place an order at Hell's Portal. Oh, how do you know, Jay? No, how do you know? There's a thing called specials instructions or notes section. Anytime you place an order, say whatever the fuck you want for the dog, especially if you bought something because the dog talked about it. It gives me goddamn stats to work off. Put it over there. But say put stickers in and say, hey, I want some Jack and Stack stick or something, the fucking snake stick or something to the goddamn reference. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. They're in, goddamn it. Which to me, I thought was the fucking funniest goddamn meme ever. <laughs> just randomly, something I just say, got one of the goddamn Zoom microwave in the background too, of course. Because me personally, I can't put it on my car because it looks, you know, to put your own face on your own car. <laughs> God, that screams like, goddamn, who's this fucking fool think he is? So, but somebody else, you can put it in your goddamn car. Doesn't look douchey. Put another fucking person. But yourself, your own face, looks kind of fucking arrogant. Let's just say that. So if you want one, they're free in goddamn orders. Just be kind of, again, because people will say that, I didn't get any stickers in my orders. I don't want to tell you didn't say anything. So fucking say something. Put it in the goddamn notes. Don't stop being a goddamn shy boy. It's called either notes section or special instructions. When you type in whatever, I see all that shit, brah, brah. So when you say what's heavier than pan terror or, hey, J-Dog, I bought this on Lord because you talked about it. And God damn, it ripped my fucking nads off. I see all that shit. Keep it coming. Anyways, uh, this is kind of an order question, but I think he always sends the email because he types out a goddamn laundry list. And I'm going to keep him kind of quick because he's got, he's abusing his fucking <laughs> privileges of asking questions. Just joking. Ask him as you want, goddamn. But he's got three of one. Michael Hedrick. One, how does HHR, HHR decide what colors will be used for colored vinyl and whether a CD will be released as a digipack, jewel case, or both? Is that decided strictly by HHR or does the band have input? Band does have input. Yeah, of course. I mean, if they could say, hey, I want uh, specifically red vinyl, they get it. Uh, the way uh, Chase has been doing it over the years, which is funny. You know, I'm kind of curious. Who started it first label wise? Because it became trendy what maybe 15 years now? Maybe just under 15 years. I remember when this happened because this was not the norm whatsoever. fucking ever. Where you put out a vinyl and the color you try to match it to the color scheme of the album. Now the funny thing is, is again, not not the fucking on my own goddamn back. But goddamn, sometimes I need to because nobody else fucking does it. And I'm pretty sure I've been ahead of the line on a lot of motherfucking things in life before it became cool. I always kind of said, not maybe so much with the swirls and shit, which those became more doable and popular, but definitely said prior to 15 years ago about kind of on this such and such album. Like I'm trying to think of an example of which a title we did. Um, what's an album that we did? Hacked up for barbecue. I'm almost positive I picked up the goddamn colors because there's a hundred uh blue splatters. The cover is fucking uh bluish. Use a blue, like what instead of like why do a red splatter? You know what I mean? Evil incarnates. Um, black as hymns of God disgrace. The first twelve inch vinyl Hell's Headbangers ever fucking cut out. The first hundred are on a red black splatter. You know the color scheme is more red and black. Um. I I think, uh, again, I, I remember saying it, but I'm not saying Eric and Chase didn't think it either. 
kind of get the feeling maybe Eric didn't care that much or put much thought into it. He was more thinking about the layouts and the art. But I think Chase was at least thinking the same thing. But I can tell you right now, yeah, we were kind of doing that way before other guys fucking were. Because you do had other labels like Nuke Nuclear Now and stuff putting out colored vinyl and stuff. But were they matching all the time with the, the color, with the, um, you know, the, the record color with the cover? I, I don't know. I, it seemed like he did more of like solid colors. I, I could be wrong, but it didn't seem like he did a whole lot of splatters and swirls and shit like that. I'm talking, again, I'm talking 15 years or more. Rah, rah. So don't come over here and say something stupid. He did this and it came out three years ago. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. It was trendy as fuck to do it then. Now all the labels do all the fucking uh, the, all the relapse and all these fucking poser ass pop up goddamn labels, which you know it's just a bunch of fucking hipsters jamming at the at best, kind of more popular stuff like Pig Destroyer and shit like that. They damn sure ain't listening to fucking like real underground goddamn music. We've already established what the fuck's underground over here, goddamn it. They just ain't. Let's let's throw a, mo- a title of what watch underground right off. Let's throw a little bit something more like that. that they need to start using different goddamn references. I do like other goddamn shit. Um, fucking coming up, you know. So, Corpse Molestation, for example, those demos and shit like that from Australia, something like that. They have they have zero clue as to what that even is. Again, that doesn't mean like oh, if you don't like Corpse Molestation, you don't like fucking death metal. You don't like underground music. I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying stuff of always that caliber. You just know it's a fan base over there that, that has fucking zero clue of what any of that shit is. Fatal demos. Dog loves them. It's fucking goddamn fatal. You know, Guts for Dinner demo. That band. They don't know that kind of shit. So it's a little annoying, that, but it is kind of cool. And, and there's a couple labels I can think of, too, which I don't want to throw names out there. Because we trade with and shit. Uh, which is like, come on, man. Just a bunch of fucking newbies. These, these guys. Better way of saying it that I haven't heard of course molestation. I question, do these guys even collect vinyl themselves? Do they buy vinyl? Not, I'll just take one because I put it out. Do they actually buy vinyl records themselves? Yeah, not going to mention names, but there's a few I highly fucking doubt it. So it's just, and yeah, whatever. That doesn't mean anything. You're better or worse person or you don't, you're not allowed to like metal music if you don't buy vinyl records. It's not that. But what I'm saying is it's strictly a business to them. It's no passion, no nothing. And they're just, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. You match the color of vinyl with the cover. I've actually kind of said sarcastically, but kind of seriously, I forget what release it was for, of uh, kind of like changing the norm. Let's get it go outside the box. Let's uh, let's do the opposite color. Like, for example, if you're doing, let's just back, background, zombie apocalypse back there. It's, it's a bluish and fucking um, black theme so theoretically you use black and blue maybe a dark gray something that's kind of in that color scheme reference why not use fucking red or paint or something something just outlandish to where no one would pick just to be against the norm because again in case you haven't noticed i like to be against the fucking norm that will just fit in fucking just normal sucks bra bra so but I remember, I think I forget, again, I forget what it says in Chase. Like, oh, that, that that sucks. It doesn't match. I'm like, you, you missed the kind of kind of the, the joke or what I was getting at. It was, it was intentional because that's whatever because that's what everybody's doing now. So almost to stand out. But I'm cool with it because as a collector, it is kind of cool. But it just become a little kind of trendy, you know, metal blade and shit doing stuff now. I mean, Again, at least Slagle the Bagel, he's been around for time, and I'm sure he listens to classic heavy metal records and, and, and probably does collect vinyl, or at least used to. So kudos to him. But the rest of them bozos over there, to... maybe. I'm just saying. I doubt it. I don't, not that I know really personally. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm pretty sure the fucking homeboy that's packing the new cannibal doesn't look goddamn listen to fucking metal. Could be wrong, but that's the, the take I fucking get. That's a goddamn question from Michael, uh, too. Oh, and the fucking jewel case and shit like that, it's it's up in the air. I mean, it's usually banned, Chase. I mean, uh, the digi books are much, much more expensive. Um, uh, Chasey Boy kind of whines and cries when we have to fucking do them, even though it's kind of weird because he kind of was the first one to start bringing them, in, bringing them into releases of doing them. So, but this will, we want to do another one. He's, ah, fuck, those are expensive. I mean, you're kind of one of the first, first one that said to do them. I'm pretty sure what the, don't quote me, but I think the first one we did was the Cultists as Ghouls Coven. Doubt that was a band's idea. Could have been, but pretty sure it was with them. But I get it. For me, my my rule of thumb is with the digi books. 
is save it for the fucking uh, the classics, the bangers of bangers, the reissuers, uh, the albums that have earned their stripes, at least earned their stripes in my take, my opinion. Why your take, why your opinion? Because it's my wallet, rah, rah, putting it out, so I call the fucking shots. Some jackass new fucking band for who do we talk about and think like, say, Electrocutioner or something, which was pretty good. That's a mean, nothing against them. I'm just using them as examples. Their new band. New album out on, on Digibook. That, that they don't, you don't get Digibook, brah, brah, in my opinion. Where are your fucking stripes come back in 20 years? For example, like the, uh, the inverted album that we're doing, the first goddamn, uh, the first inverted album, Shadowland, uh, LP and CD. Not saying it'll happen, but my vote is I'll probably get voted out. Do the CD on a fucking Digibook. Why not? It's already been on CD a few different pressings. Um, Let's do it fucking 2023. For, well, it'll be 2024 by the time it comes out. It might even be 2025. Eh, probably 2025, to be honest with you. Um, Digi goddamn book. And then an LP, you know, 500, preferably all color, maybe 100 color, hundred copies for the uh, blackheads only. And if, if it was really up for the dog's vote, 100 goddamn 12-inch picture. It's limited as fuck. Um, because that, to me, is a classic goddamn album. That's not classic. Jay Dogs, Dragon League, Gourmet, Spatter. Again, my picks, my wallet. When we go to your goddamn label, you can put out whatever the fuck you want and jewel case it, digi book it, fucking flop, flop book it, those little floppy cock fucking digi packs, whatever the fuck you want, Brian Bach, come over here and it's my pick, that's my choice, goddammit. So, in those cases, kind of put input, a lot of times it's either uh, Sea Dog or the band. Uh, two, the interviews have been killer. Do you have anyone else lined up for this year? Got nobody lined up. To be honest with you, most of the time, I don't have anyone lined up. I have, oh, I see so-and-so's coming to town, or, oh, I see I'm going to such and such fest. I hope I'll get X, Y, and Z. That's what it is. So there's never really anything lined up, per se. There's been a couple of exceptions, don't get me wrong, where I had to line up. For example, you saw that Lord Shabathan interview. That wasn't lined up for shit. I didn't even know he was going to be there. I just heard he was there. Oh, fuck. Ask Paul Dunsky, because he's the one up on the show. Hey, he's here. Where is he? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's exact words. Like, you want to meet him? He's like, yeah. He just walked me backstage. I walked back there. Lord Shabathan was sitting there fucking eating uh, some brisket or something, some chicken or something. He was at a buffet, the food buffet for the bands. And I asked him, I just walked up to him. Can you, can, you want to, uh, can I do an interview for my YouTube channel? I'm a big, big fan. He's like, yeah, sure. Uh, he's like, uh, uh, when do you want to do it? I'm like, I'm, I was like, preferably now. He's like, oh, okay. Well, can I just finish eating real quick? I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. So I just sat off to the side of the couch. He ate for about five, ten minutes. You're over. You ready? I was like, yep. And we went out in the goddamn parking lot and did it. So that wasn't planned at all. I mean, I'll try for shit coming, but there's not to, again, John Gallagher, that'd be the most uh, worth just bringing up names as far as big names coming. But honestly, for the rest of this year, I can't think of anything. I've asked multiple other guys in the local scene. I've asked Brian Baxter, yeah, we're going to do one, bro. It's like, All right. Yeah, I mean, it's on you, man. <laughs> you got my number. Let me know when you're ready. Uh, or we could just do it at a show when we're standing with our fucking dicks in our hands. We're just talking anyways. Some of these guys, ah, not now, bro. Why not now? We're, we're literally, it's the exact same thing of what we're doing now. I mean, granted, I'll, I'll, I'll liven up a little bit more for the camera so that way it's somewhat fucking entertaining. Uh, same thing with uh, Paul from Embalmer. Same thing. Oh, yeah, not now, bro. Why not? Uh, yeah, let's set something up. There's nothing to set up. I got questions right on top of my head I can come up with. Um, so those guys, I mentioned to Chris Dora, kind of the same thing. Although he did say, yeah, let's just do it at the next show or something like that. I'm like, perfect. So probably I'll, maybe you'll see one with Chris Dora. You know, he's in tons of bands, drummer from Solus. Uh, favorite thing he's ever probably done that I was in is a, a band Decrepit. Huge Decrepit fan, as you guys, any regular channel watchers know. But uh, his main, you know, metal band, death metal band that uh, you guys may or may not be familiar with is Kernagia. Uh, Hell's put out the goddamn LP, old school 90s death metal band. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Still has some LPs in stock, I believe, in case you want to fucking check it out. He's a drummer of that. So possibly him. Um, I asked uh, Dwayneyak, Dwayne Morris. He kind of gave me a beer. Oh, I don't like cameras. Whatever. All right. I don't know. They're like, what's, they're, I mean, they're not scary. Um, I get that. What I'm getting is, I'm not throwing anyone on the bus. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you responses of guys that are kind of in the local area. That's that's what I get. I mean, I'm not going to fucking hold a gun to their head to make them do it. I, I ask them, let's do it. I'm up for it. If you're up for it, cool. I mean, um, 
that that's kind of that's literally kind of the answers I got your responses I get. So you kind of you guys tell me in the comments if you, if you were doing it, those responses you get. What would you do? Like, and you, you know, can't I can't make them do it? I ask. They say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. When? Yeah, nothing over thing. About twenty minutes, and it's just us talking. That's it. There's something you don't want to talk about, and you're like in the back of your mind. I hope he doesn't bring this up. Just tell me ahead of time. There's a couple guys, not going to mention names, that I've done interviews where they said, let's not talk about X, Y, and Z. No problem, bro. I'm not going to bring it up. Let's just do that. I'm not going to throw you under the bus like that. Uh, <clears throat> three, I want to give you a shout out for some of the bands I checked out or discovered for watching your channel on Hellcast. Unlord? Mm hmm. Pharmacist? Oh, yeah. Protector. Don't forget that goddamn Protector. They're one of the goddamn German fucking big four fucking greats if their goddamn was one. In my goddamn opinion, especially Gollum and Misanthropy. Now, don't be wrong. They got some turds on their belt. Don't get me wrong. And Savage Master. I'm sure there are others, but those are the ones that come to my mind right now. On the flip side, I'm also giving a shout out to the bands. I like that you have ripped on, uh, all, which is always entertaining and it doesn't hurt my feelings. Blood Incantation, Dark Throne, Burzum, and Pestilence. Yep, yep, yep. All of which need ripping on. Only whips take that shit personal. It's got that right, goddammit. Only whips take... Again, unless it's something that's directly like harming you or your family. I don't take anything goddamn personal. Um, that that's I, I never understood that because I never did as a kid. I don't know. It's fucking just grow up here, bra bra. That's the way I think it. Otherwise, go and dress a goddamn Barbie. Rick Gal Galvez. Yo, J-Dog. Rick from Malice Divine here. Oh, Malice Divine here. Still, we still got some Malice Divine CDs to go out and throw in your uh, order. Within Rick and Reason. Don't order one CD or one patch. Now my fucking shipping quadrupled because you want your free goddamn CD. Within Reason goddamn fucking order. I have a question for the channel. Why is it that you think certain bands blow up in popularity while others who may be as good, if not better, play a similar style, have been around longer, etc.? Remain unpopular in comparison. I've actually talked about the channel, but I'll try to keep it brief because I can go on for hours about that. Big fan of the channel here. I watch it every day, and it often gives me a good laugh. That's what I'm there for, bra bra. Especially when you make fun of Hootie the Blowfish. Oh, yeah. Nothing worth it. Nothing goddamn worse than Hootie. And Tweet Core listening, pink panning, wearing posers. A lot of them out there. Later, goddammit. I, so what I think on your question, as far as why some bands blow up, which it's like the same genre as another band that's been around 10, 20 years longer, or bands that are the same time frame equally as good, is I honestly believe, dude, and I've said this again, but it was a while ago in the video, I, I just believe that, 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 that this scene in general, metal scene, is kind of no different. It's just more niche and just smaller, just a smaller community, but it's the same brainwashed minds as mainstream society. It's ran by trends and fucking posers for the most part. It's not individuals thinking for themselves for the most part. Again, the ones that are, it's the guys that have been around 30 plus years, et cetera. And they don't, they don't, they don't just like Dark Throne because you're supposed to. Again, put Dark Throne, again, why is Dark Throne so goddamn popular? I tell you right now, if Dark Throne did the exact same albums that they ever recorded, but let's just say they came out in like 2005. No one would care, dude. They would be about as equally as popular, maybe, and this is a fucking goddamn long stretch, maybe, as a band like, let's say, Apocalyptic Rains. I'm just telling you. They like it because it's you're, you're supposed to. They were the their first band ahead of its, you know, um, at the forefront, but at the same time, in my opinion, why I rip on those guys is because they're a bunch of fucking trend jumpers, dude. They started out sounding as a Swedish death metal band from fucking Norway. So they're just, I guarantee those were who their buds were, who they were writing and shit like that. You know, demo tape, tape trading, uh, writing letters together and albums they were picking up was Swedish shit. So let's play Swedish shit because that's what's cool. Euronymous fucking has that whole goddamn image and gimmick going of the black metal scene. Oh, so that's what's cool. So now he's playing black metal now. What happens? Euronymous fucking dies. Dead's fucking dead. That shit's kind of fading out. Other genres are kind of coming in. Death metal bands are getting fucking faster. Blast beats are being created. Let's do something completely fucking different. And they're just jumping around. That's the only reason that shit's fucking tolerated. Again, because it's ran by fucking, and not, not saying necessarily a band, but the fan base. Trendies and fucking posers, because again, 
if their debut album, that was a band that started in 2005, I'm not saying nobody would like it. I can see something like, oh, this, these songs are great. Something hits everybody. But about as popular as a bot, bot band of size of Apocalypse Grades. They would not be this cult status. So there's some of that's right place, right time. I guess a better way of wording it for them. But as far as bands coming out and shit like that, it's, dude, who's cool on social media? Who's being talked about? Because think about it. If you sit there and say, earlier, like, yeah, you start talking about a band like Martyr or something like that, you're not going to get very many people interacting. Because most people don't listen to that or know. You start talking about Frozen Soul or, or, or 200 Stab Wounds or Seguizio Box, there's interaction about those bands. There's a bunch of fucking other people talking about them. Like, I, I think the biggest, why the fuck is this band fucking popular out of all of them is Gate Creeper. And I don't think Gate Creeper is bad. I almost split with Exhumed. I saw them when they played with Exhumed. Oh, pretty, it sounds like Swedish Death Metal. But the re, they're the kings of, why the fuck does anyone care about this band? Because literally it was like, it sounds like another Swedish Death Metal band that's, to my knowledge, not from Sweden, from the U.S., right? Didn't think, why do you not know, j Dog Didn't care enough to dig, dig, dive, dive into it enough. I'm pretty sure from the fuck's in the U.S. It, even they're not. U.S., Sweden, doesn't even like matter. It just sounds like Swedish death metal. It's like, dude, literally by 1994, this shit was already overdone. Not saying you're allowed, not allowed to have another band here and there because there's stuff that I think are phenomenal albums, such as later Flesh Crawl albums and um, Flesh Crawl being from Germany, but it just sounds like pure Swedish death metal. I found some of their later albums, those 2000s are fucking bangers. And you guys all know the goddamn Mighty In Trails. I keep talking about them. They started in the goddamn 2000s, not 92 like they said they did. Bullshit. The demo came out in 2009. That's when you started. Blah, blah. So there is exceptions to the rule. Why did you need, though, another? Like, what is so awesome about Gate Creeper over fucking. Uh, okay, yeah, Gate Creeper is definitely more popular than Flesh Crawl. Flesh Crawl has been around fucking longer. What is better about Gate Creeper than Flesh Crawl? Tell me why that is more popular. Songs? I mean, granted, that's opinion. I think Flesh Crawl smoke Gate Creepers. But that's opinion. You could say Gate Creepers smoke, smoke fucking Flesh Crawl. Outside that, because obviously, cut the shit, not everybody's going to fucking think that. It's all image. It's because what people saw. It's on Relapse Records. It's on a bigger label. It had a bigger fucking push. Uh, now, granted, they got the push because there was buzz over it on their own. And that I think it's just between uh, Facebooks, Twitch, or Whatever these fucking youngians use. Again, a real man would never be on half this shit, in my personal fucking opinion. When I think of Twitter, Twitch, what is one of these other fucking dumbass ones? I, honestly, when I think of that shit, just my opinion, I can be completely fucking wrong. It's part of the reason I never got again on Facebook. Granted, I don't put Facebook in this category because basically everybody has it. Um, I always thought, but Facebook was in this category for a long time. I thought 12-year-old girl shit. You know, where those girls are fucking taking selfies and posting them and shit with their goddamn fucking little uh, stuffed animals and bunnies and goddamn pink fucking clothes and shit all over the place, you know, laying on their bed like, oh man, rough morning, bro. That type of shit. That's what I think of Twitter and Twitch. A real man is not on that bullshit. Now, again, I could be a little outdated, a little fucking incorrect because I'm not on there, but that's what I always, that's what I equated that crap to. So no dudes on that fucking shit. And again, the only reason a dude would be on there, the only reason this dude would be on there is for business, making loot, brah, brah. You ain't making Scott what, what, what the fuck are you posting your personal shit on? Why would you tell the entire world your, your personal goddamn fucking business? YouTube, I've always found that different because you're watching videos. You're being entertained. Whatever your interest is. In this world, goddamn metal music. But whatever you want. If you're into hunting or golfing, I guarantee there's hunting and golfing channels. Granted, I never looked, but I would bet a fucking hefty amount of cash without even looking ahead of time that there's channels about it. Getting at, you can watch videos and shit of anything that that is of interest to you. So that's completely different. YouTube made sense. All that other shit, this is just 12-year-old little girl fucking shit. But nonetheless, if that's, I think, I'm assuming that that's where the gate creepers and shit are on there. Again, not throwing them under the 12-year-old girl shit. Uh, everybody's on there these days. I'm assuming whatever people are up talking about that, then, you know, the 16-year-olds and shit that don't know any better, they hear a gate creeper before they even, they, <laughs> I guarantee you there's, there's in fact, I, I don't I guarantee, I know for a fact that there's people out there, young kids, I guarantee there's even fucking tw people in their 20s and shit. That listen to Gate Creeper, no Gate Creeper, or a fan of Gate Creeper, like legitimate fans, 
maybe have bought a CD or something, owned something by them, owned a T-shirt, went to the shows, and have never even heard this member. I bet you they exist. I, I, in fact, I know they exist. How do you know that, Jade? I'll, because I, I've seen out and about a couple of people with a hoodie and shit like that. And I know just by looking at him, I was like, this guy's never heard like an ever flowing stream in his life. I, I was like, I would literally bet everything I have on it. I just know. Like, if you can't say, you know, I fucking know, dude. There's certain times I'm fucking 100% right. And this was one of them. I know. That's crazy to me. But it's not their fault. Again, the trendy shit and what was being talked about. Chit chat. And that was gay creepers in the forefront. The fucking the newbie, whether he's young or in his 20s or whatever. He heard, holy fuck, this shit sounds cool. Got the buzzsaw guitar. Holy fuck. And again, I probably would think the same if that was the first. I definitely would have thought the same. If that was the first sweetest death metal band I heard. Or sweetest sounding death metal. Again, I don't know. I don't think they're from Sweden. So before you come in here saying anything fucking stupid. Again, I didn't deal with the whole story. I didn't care that much about the goddamn band. I said, oh, wow, this. I've heard this 10 million times. I didn't care. Thought it was pretty enjoyable live. And it didn't, it's nothing I would shut off. But you know that, but you never heard Dismember at all. You never heard Left Hand Path. You never heard Where No Life Dwells. You never heard Into the Fucking Grave. You never heard Dark Recollections. To me, that's just pure fucking, I don't even know the word, blasphemy, weird, weird as fuck, stupid as fuck, just get the fuck out of here as fuck. I, I don't even know the word to put on it. Like, what? What? I just don't get it. That's like saying you're in a rock and roll. And you never heard of like classic rock shit, like Van Halen, Rush, fucking ZZ Top, like like completely oblivious. Haven't heard it. That that that's that's fucking weird. I'm sorry. That's just flat out fucking weird. And again, as a 16 year old, well, that's what he heard first. I get that. But the old fucking dog, dog didn't come out here and goddamn death demos as first. That's the first death metal to ever recorded. Arguably speaking, some people say Seven Churches. Regardless, around that 84, 85 era, first death metal ever recorded. It's not the first death metal I heard. I heard that probably about four or five years later. I went back to it, did my fucking research. Oh, it, it, this was a, something of interest. God damn, this is the what I'm into. This is what I like. These the tune skis that are uh, and the lifestyle I want to follow. You go back. You don't just stop. Eh, fucking first thing I heard was Cannibal Vile. I guess that's where music started. It was 1997. I'm not going anywhere back. No, that's not how it fucking works. Yeah, that's, that's poser shit, Rob. That's what's every the Pantera guy. That's why he has that mentality because he didn't stop. You heard Pantera. That was supposed to be a gateway band because that's pussy shit hell of a lot heavier and better gate creepers wonderful by the way gate creepers definitely heavier than fucking wimp terra you go and you're looking for the heavier shit if you're in extreme music that's you're now that guy just in a little you know just a little different just talking about a little bit different shit you just stop there what was before gate creeper you're that guy just as equally as fucking stupid so that's the way I got to see it. So it's kind of how I see how fucking bands, my personal, that's just my view. I could be completely off. At the end of the day, I don't think anybody knows definitively why some bands got popular over when they start at the same time or bands that were around earlier. And again, I just use a reg regular goddamn death metal band. A little bit biasedly, of course, because Hell's put them out. But uh, a band like Shed the Skin. If you like this newer death metal bands that are coming out and shit like that, Shed the skin should be at least up your alley. But if you take as a whole, the Sanguizio box, the 200 stab wounds, the Frozen Souls, the Gate Creepers, if you take their whole fan base, which is, seems to be pretty goddamn large based on fucking my, my, what I see, not even half of them know what Shed the Skin even is. Why? A lot of you guys are young and shit. You should be full of what's, what's the newer stuff coming out. Who's putting out current albums? Who's the new cool thing? They should be in your fucking realm of checking out or being into, but they're not. And that's why, that's why I, I consider a lot of them, they're just, they're, they're posers that will not be around 20 years from now. The writing's all over the wall. And that's how you kind of fucking identify. Them. And again, not all of them, just the ones that are searching and then they will be here. Those ones will, but they tell you, Brian, Brian, but vast majority of them, they'll be bags will be well packed before we hit 20 fucking 30. It's the name of the game. I've seen them come and go by the fucking dozens. So, just call it right now. Comes with surgery. Let's look at you. When the guy's boss get in the morning later, goddammit. 